guys, this is Dodoid. So today we're going to be doing some work on my SGI fuel. It's a little lighter than an octane, but certainly heavier than an O2. Anyway, we're going to be installing the Kuba Suzuko, I'm not sure if I'm getting that name right, fuel ATX adapter, an ATX power supply to go with it, a Dallas chip, because my fuel was missing one, and uh, we're also going to be connecting to the L1 controller via serial to check some things out. So uh, let's get ready to the video. First I had to get the product out of the box, which was surprisingly difficult. In fact, according to Final Cut, this took a minute and 30 seconds. Once I got it out of the box, the device was wrapped in a sheet of large bubble wrap. Interestingly, the device wasn't in an anti-static bag, but there are no signs of shipping damage and it works as intended, so I can't complain. Next it was time to put it in the fuel, so after fidgeting around with the side panel for a while and eventually remembering that it opens upwards instead of backwards like your average PC, I got the fuel open. Since the connector the adapter needs to plug into is located reasonably far inside the machine, I first had to unplug the hard drive cable, lift the hard drive cage up, and remove the blue cooling shroud. With the space cleared, it was just a matter of pressing the adapter down into the socket, with the cutout edge fitting around the 5.5 inch drive bay. The smaller piece has only 3 pins, while the fuel socket has 4, but it can simply be lined up the only way that it will fit in, and pressed down like the other one, fitting side by side. When installed properly, the adapter will look like this. This is probably optional, and the adapter will probably work fine without it, but after installing it, I noticed that there were two conductive surfaces very close to each other, which could potentially cause a short. Though I don't think it's likely to cause a problem, I chose to take the smaller adapter piece out, add a small square of blue electrical tape to the trace on the corner, and reinstall it as before. With the adapter installed, I turned my attention to the Dallas chip, which my fuel was entirely lacking. I bought this brand new one on DigiKey. Though DigiKey has discontinued the chip since I purchased mine a few months ago, you can probably still find new units somewhere. When installed properly, the shiny circle should be in the top right corner of the chip, and the text should be upside down with the word Philippines closest to the heat sinks and the word Dallas closest to the expansion slots. Now we can lower the power supply into the top of the case just like on any other desktop PC. This one doesn't quite fit perfectly because of the screw mount on the power connector, but it's still perfectly fine. If you have this problem, don't put the bottom screw in all the way. Bending the metal a little is okay, but not too much. On this power supply, the top screws fit in like normal. Now you can plug in the 24-pin and 8-pin power connectors to the adapter, and put all the cables you're not using into the 5.5 inch drive bays. Make sure to leave one cable available to plug in your drives. If you need help choosing a power supply to use with this adapter in your fuel, please visit the Nekochan thread linked in the description. Then run your hard drive cable from the power supply to your drives. For cleanness, I chose to route mine under the 8-pin motherboard connector, plugged into the drive, and then back up to the CD-ROM at the top, storing the slack in a spare hard drive bay. I also chose to plug the hard drive data connector back in, even though I won't be installing IRIX for a while. With the new parts installed, the fuel is beginning to look a lot more finished, apart from the graphics, of course. Now, without graphics, an SGI fuel can't boot, but you can still connect to the L1 controller inside, a separate system. So I got out my terminal laptop, put in my Telex bootable DOS floppy, and opened it up. It seems like it would be a simple matter of plugging the cable into the laptop, plugging the other end into the fuel, and... There we find the problem. I needed, and did not have, a DB9 female-to-female -female adapter. Thanks to breadboards and db9pinout.com, however, I managed to make my own. Yes, those two wires are held together by a surgical hemostat. So I plugged one end into the laptop, the other into the fuel, set Telex to 38400 baud with hardware handshaking, and flipped the switch on the back of the fuel. Surprisingly, it worked perfectly. Now we can use the laptop to, over the serial port to the L1 controller, power the fuel on, and then power it back off again. We can also list some basic information about the system's hardware, or do a whole lot of other things related to the hardware, without the system even having to be turned on. What's good is that, checking the log, nothing seems to be particularly wrong with the system, at least for now, so we should be able to get it going. So that was the past few days' progress on the fuel. <sighs> and, uh, as you can see, we did manage to get to the L1, so now I should just need the V10 graphics card, and we should be able to get it up and running. I'll certainly keep you updated when I do get the V10, but for now I don't have it, and in fact it hasn't even been shipped yet, so that may still be a while. 
Anyway, if you did enjoy the video, or you're interested in the STI Fuel, then uh, please do subscribe, as we're still a very, very small channel, and it does help us grow. If you're interested in doing this, please check out some of the Nekochan Forms links in the description, and until next time, bye.